Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max and I'm joined by Kyle, who you'll recognize if you watch any of the other Out of Spec channels. Hello. Hey Max, thanks for having me on. Yeah, super happy to have you on. And today I want to discuss this topic that gets talked a lot about EV world that I have to be honest, I don't entirely know about myself. I know that batteries, I've heard they like to be warm, right? Your battery in your car. But in terms of how do you tell if your battery is warm? What does it mean? What are the benefits of a battery in the optimal temperature, all that? Um, where do we begin? What is the deal with battery warmth and uh, temperature? Well, perfect topic, I think, because we're just, especially here in Colorado, going through an extreme cold snap, our second one this winter, getting down to minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit and below, really chilly. We're talking, you know, minus 15, minus 11-ish uh, degrees Celsius for our European viewers. And, um, you know, the, the topic of the, the show we did a couple days ago for our viewers, we did, you know, what, what are charging speeds? What's fast? What's slow? And there's always that caveat when we talk about charging speeds, which is you'll get the maximum charging speed of your car if you, A, plug into a charger that can give you all the power your car can take. If you can, B, have basically a low state of charge in your car because most batteries slow down as they fill up when you charge them and see if your battery is warm. But we, what we've never done up to this point on this channel is quantify what is a warm battery and how would a general user know. And I think in general, it's important to understand what temperature range we're even talking about here, just so our viewers get an idea. Batteries really like to be, let's just say, between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. They can actually get a little bit warmer. The, the real happy sweet spot in Celsius is 20 to 45 degrees Celsius is a warm battery. A cold battery is anything below 20, and a really hot battery is anything above 45 degrees C. That's really, and maybe you can put the F translations on there for everyone, but that's really the window that, that most NCM batteries, lithium batteries like to operate in. And, and that's easy because it's not like a nuclear reactor. That's, those are speeds. Those are temperatures that I think all of us can relate to is just being warm. Yeah. It's just like, Ed, there's a nice day outside. Great. Your batteries think the same. They're just like humans. Yeah. So, you know, when it's zero degrees Fahrenheit outside, like it is right now, you're not seeing me going out in, you know, shorts and a t-shirt. I'm bundled up, I'm freezing. And I'm like, oh no, put the heated seat on in the car. Your battery feels the same way. Now it's really important for our viewers to know that the cold weather does not hurt your battery pack in any way. All of the electric cars on sale today are designed and engineered to handle temperatures much colder than most of you will experience. I actually, one of our colleagues went to the Volkswagen Battery Engineering Lab a few months ago, and they had a Volkswagen ID4 in a basically giant freezer for cars, and it was at minus 65 degrees Celsius, and the car was operating normally. The cars can handle it. It doesn't hurt them. But as a user experience, it can get annoying if you have a cold battery pack. Let's talk about what happens with a cold battery pack. How would you kind of know yeah. if your battery is cold? The first and most notable thing that will happen is if you're driving an electric car, you're probably familiar with the concept of regenerative braking or regen. And that is when you lift off the accelerator pedal or touch the brake pedal in some cars, the electric motors, essentially reverse their roll and slow down the car and charge up the battery. When the battery's really cold below freezing, you pretty much lose that. You know, it'll start to lessen, lessen, lessen all the way to the point where you won't have any regen. So if you park a Tesla yeah. outside overnight and it's dead freezing cold outside and you come up to a stoplight, you're going to lift off the accelerator pedal and it's going to coast. And the reason it's doing that is because batteries will not charge when they are below a certain temperature. And that certain temperature is around freezing or just below. So um, that's the first way to tell if your battery pack is, you know, very chilly. The second way to know is actually lethargic acceleration. A lot of cars have power meters. Um, and you'll start to see them back off in the cold. Rivian does a great job of graying out the bar. BMW does the same. Volkswagen has the blue available section. If you watch our ID4 first drive, that backs off from full. And if you really notice limited regen and limited output of acceleration, then you're like, oh, I probably have a stone cold battery pack. <laughs> 
Of course, you're not going to have a freezing cold battery pack if it's 90 degrees outside and you experience those same limitations. That can be too hot of a battery pack, but that's for a different, uh, different topic. So that's one key way to know. The second way to know if you have a cold battery pack and what really I think most people, this is how they find out, they roll up to a fast charger on a road trip, they've been driving for two hours and they plug in and they only get 30 kilowatts, 40 kilowatts, 70 kilowatt charging speed at low state of charge when they're, ex when they're plugged into a charger that can deliver the power. And that's usually everyone's first slap in the face, if you will, because you're expecting to charge in 15 or 20 minutes, get out on the road, get that 170, 200, 240 kilowatt charging speed that you would expect, but you get to the charger, your battery's ice cold, and you're getting, you know, 25% of the speeds you want, and you're sitting there for 40 minutes. And Kyle, here's the thing that confuses me, right? Let's say I start my gas Mini Cooper. That engine's going to be really cold when it starts, and I'll hear it. It's a gas car, right? And then I go drive for 10, 15 minutes. Then it's going to warm up pretty quickly at that point. The reactions will start happening. The engine's going to start running normally. In an electric car, you mentioned, right, lethargic acceleration, lower regen. Those are symptoms you can notice. But I would think driving it, you know, getting those motors hot, that's not getting my battery warm at all. Actually, not really at all. And it, and in fact, um, especially if the temperatures are dropping, like you're going into the evening, you might actually be getting a colder battery pack as you drive, especially yeah. if you're going down the road on the highway. You see, um, we, basically materials battery pack your car, any physical object doesn't suffer from wind chill like humans do. Um, so it's always going to be ambient. But if you're driving, the wind is going to cool down the battery pack to ambient faster. So, so basically, it sounds like the battery needs a totally different thing keeping it warm than what's in like in a gas car with the engine, right? Like the, it, it's kind of like saying expecting your engine to warm your fuel tank, which maybe it does. I don't know, but it sounds like basically <laughs> the the car has to heat the battery some other way, and it's not through driving. Right. So, so either you would in the winter time, every car has a different battery heating strategy, but certainly driving normally down the road, cruising at 50, 60, 70 miles an hour is not going to warm up your battery pack much at all. Uh, just that natural fact. Now there's a couple different strategies and each car is a little different. First of all, some cars will just automatically run what's called a battery heater when the battery is cold. The Upside to that is if you happen to plug into a charger, then no matter what in the wintertime, your car's trying to warm the battery pack up every time you drive. The downside is you're burning all that energy where most of the time you're just commuting to work and back, not going to a fast charger. Again, it doesn't hurt the car to have a cold battery, so that's a very inefficient way of doing it. The other way to warm up the battery pack, which is more common and is increasingly more common, is when you select a fast charging station from your car's navigation system. For example, in uh, you know Hyundai, Kia, Genesis stuff, they just released a preconditioning uh, software update. I made a whole video about that. We'll leave it linked in the description. You select the charger in the nav, and the car will warm the battery pack up on the way there. So it will only burn the extra juice to run a dedicated battery heater when it knows it's going to need to be fast charged. Because that's typically right. the only time a user is going to have an issue with a cold battery pack. Yeah. And it sounds like then I basically need to let the car know and in most cars, the intuitive process for that is route me to a charger using the car software. But let's say I like to use my phone to get directions instead, or maybe I just don't need directions. I'm not using them. Uh, is there anything else I can do in most cars or how does that work? Honestly, not practically, no. Um, you know, it, they're really, when it's cold and we're talking not Florida cold, you know, where they're like, oh, it's 50 degrees. I don't know what to do. I'm talking Colorado, Minnesota cold. Cold. When it's cold, below freezing, um, having a dedicated battery heater in your car is really important. It's almost worth making a buying decision on your car over this topic because if you're going to road trip through the winter months in you know cold weather states, um, what you need to do is that car needs to be warming the battery pack on the way to your charger and on the way to the next charger and on the way to the next charger after that. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with extremely slow charging where you should be getting fast charging. You know, we're talking about taking a 
potentially 20 minute charging session and turning it into, in some cases, an hour and a half or longer. I mean, we're not talking about a small time difference here. So the biggest offender here is actually the Volkswagen ID4. The Volkswagen ID4 has no on route battery preconditioning. And there's really not a great way to warm up that car on the way to a charger. There is a driving style, which has been coined yo-yoing the car. You might see this in forums when you're on there. And the whole idea with a yo-yo is that you go wide open throttle until you know you're about to crash into the car in front of you. And then you go hard brakes, trying to get all the regen you can. And you actually want to go maximum braking with regenerative, not friction brakes. And so it requires like this really nuanced driving style. You're going to make your passenger throw up on the way to the charger going full throttle, big brake, full throttle, big brake. But what that does is rather than just cruising normally, which is not stressful on the car at all, that's not going to heat it up. The yo-yo method is spiking, you know, big power output, big power input. And every time you have more power flowing, there's losses, there's heat loss. And so that will very quickly put heat into the high voltage system of your car. And that's, that's really the only thing you can do in some cars that don't have preconditioning. Yeah. So it sounds like, and we'll touch on this, I'm sure in later episodes, but basically there's no way of getting around to get your battery hot. You're going to have to use energy from the car that tells me that that car is probably gonna have less range if it's really cold and it's needing to do that. Absolutely. Anytime you need to warm up a battery pack, that's energy taken from itself that could have been used to propel the car, which is being used to create waste heat to warm the battery. And the only practical need to warm up the battery pack is so you have faster charging. That's really it. If you're on your way to work, if you're on your way home and you're plugging it into a level two station, there's nothing to worry about. We're, you know, none of these mm. systems are, um, you know, ever going to get cold enough to where they pretty much won't charge off of a home charger or anything like that. So if I'm watching the local news and they tell me electric cars are bad in winter, they're not talking about, right, oh, it's hard to start up. It's like my gas car. It's going to not complain or it's going to have slow performance. You said sometimes initially they can, but um, it sounds like the biggest consequence, yeah, is just the charging, right, with the battery temperature. That's the only time you'll ever need to warm up the battery pack is going to a fast charger going to those ev goes the electrify americas or the dc fast charging charge point locations or others otherwise if you're going to work and you're plugging into your charger that takes eight hours if you're plugging in at home just drive the car normally winter time you know you're going to be fine you might have a little less power if you like to floor it everywhere you might have a little less efficiency because you can't recapture all the regen but for the few days a year that it's going to get below freezing for most people there's really nothing to think about. But here's the thing. If you are going to a fast charger, which a lot of people can't charge at home, a lot of people have to rely on fast charging. And um, you know, it's really important to know when your battery is warm enough. And there are certain cars, F-150 Lightning, Mercedes, actually AMG EQ stuff, um, I'm trying to think Leaf even, will give you a temperature gauge for your battery pack. Uh, but very – actually, Mazda MX-30 does that as well, which is really funny. Uh, it's the one thing it does well. Not a recommend the EV that we <laughs> suggest you buy. <laughs> Don't buy an MX-30 if you learn anything from this channel. But um, you know what, what's interesting is uh, most cars don't have that. So for, especially for a lot of new EV drivers, they're not expecting slow charging. They're thinking it's the charger might be the issue, and it certainly still could be the issue. But 99% of the time, if you get really slow charging – on the coldest day of the year, it's because your battery is cold. And so if your car has preconditioning, learn how to use it, research it, look it up in the forums and know how to activate it. It's really difficult on the uh, Genesis GV60, Kia EV6 and Ionic 5. I know we have a lot of owners of those cars watching these videos, that's really tough. If you have an ID4, there is no preconditioning. It's not even worth putting a charger in the nav. It doesn't do anything. But if you have a Taycan, if you have a Mercedes electric, if you have now a Ford product, actually a Ford electric with the newest software, if you have a Tesla, all you need to do is select the charger you're going to and the car will automatically warm up the battery pack as quickly as it can while you're there. Now, if you're just driving 10 minutes to the charger, you're not getting that much warm. These are huge battery packs in every car. They weigh over a thousand pounds in some cases. It's so much metal. It's so much material to try and warm up quickly. So you always want to select that charger as soon as possible. 
on the way there so you can have the warmest temperature. And there's really only one cautionary thing I'll say about this whole warming the battery pack. If you're going to get to that charger at 1% state of charge or 2% state of charge, if you're really stretching your range to get there, it might be worth to turn off preconditioning or select a location just nearby the charger so that you don't burn any extra energy getting there to warm up the battery pack. Because what's most important is you get to the charger rather than yeah. you know run out five minutes before with a hot battery. That's going to do you no good. So that's just, you know, if you're really stretching it, that's one thing that can really cut you out because preconditioning a battery takes a lot of energy. Yeah, I love that recommendation. I think that's kind of why this channel exists, right? Is to give people an understanding of these fundamental concepts. Your car might not tell you that when it's preconditioning, you're getting less range. But if you watch this channel, you listen to us, you're going to know that, oh, well, I'm heating my battery somehow. The energy has to come out of somewhere that's coming out of energy that could be your driving range. So once you know that, yeah, you can know, oh, do I want to prioritize the most range and I know I'm going to have a slow charge or do I not care at all? I have tons of battery. I just need to get to this charger and uh, I want to see, you know, as high kilowatts as my car can take. Yeah. Certain cars take this thought process and do it for you. For example, Tesla will start, uh, will stop preconditioning. If it notices you're getting to a supercharger, uh, I think below 5%, something like that. It's like, oh, stop preconditioning. I'm going to get you there. Uh, and so really smart stuff. But uh, most of these cars are, are manual. The user has to have some control over this. That's why you know, we never say owning an EV is easy. We never say it's easier than a combustion car because guess what? People lie to you if that's the case. For some cases, yeah, you plug it in at home, it's full every morning, you never think about it. But for a lot of people who use their cars to actually go places, which is the point of a car, a lot of math is involved, a lot of these thought processes. And you know what? We're here to not sugarcoat anything. We're here to give you the realistic cases of owning an electric car. So, um, you know, if there's anything you can take away from these topics that we're talking about, if you want the fastest charging speed on your car, we'll leave a link to uh, in the description below to a document we've created that says pretty much most of the popular electric cars and the fastest speeds they could theoretically charge at if they are low on charge level, because again, they always charge fastest dead. If you plug into a charger that can deliver all the power it can accept, and if you have a warm battery pack, that theoretical maximum charge rate will be in the document below. And you can play, make it a game. See if you can try and hit it. If you have an EV6 or Ionic 5, try and get to that 240 kilowatt charging rate. Then you'll know you did everything perfectly. It's actually kind of fun to try and maximize your charge rate. Yeah, well, fun for us anyways, at least, but maybe you find it fun too. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Kyle, I'm hoping, I'm happy to make this document, but I'm hoping in the future, you know how you open your car door and like has a sticker, here's the maximum tire pressure we recommend. Why don't manufacturers just put, here's the charging speed of this car? Like it's nowhere on, usually on the physical car, it's in the marketing copy, it's in, you know, bullets point somewhere else, but it's not on the car itself. And it feels like such a fundamental thing that people should know. Yeah. You know, I wish when you open the charging port, it says max. Oh, you know, yeah. That would make more sense on. than the door. Yeah. And, uh, but the problem I think with that realistically is most electric cars now are getting software updates over time. And a lot of these software updates increase the charging power of the vehicle. In some cases they decrease the power of the vehicle. <laughs> so I think, uh, just because they're connected, they're getting updates, Typically, manufacturers release a car in a very, you know, sort of constrained sense, and then they open it up once they get more data, make it faster. I don't think it's realistic for that to actually be included on uh, on vehicles for sale. I think it's up to the consumer to know. I bought an, a 2023 ID4. If I do everything right, I should see 187 kilowatts right at 19% well, state of charge. You know where to look? It'll be that document. I'll try to make it as updated as possible. And if you notice anything that's wrong in that, feel free to comment or if you have other questions on this topic. But Kyle, do you think there's anything else we need to kind of comment on in terms of battery temperature, conditioning, all that? Basically, there's no reason to ever warm up your battery pack if you're just driving around normally. It's only to get you faster charging for 99% of the use cases. Yeah, totally agree. Well, thank you so much for watching our spec guide. And again, comment if you have other questions on this topic or send us an email. We have an email in the description as well. And thank you so much for joining me on this episode, Kyle. Yep. Thanks, Mac. Thanks all to you for watching and we'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.